Good morning and welcome to Ethnos. We are glad that you can join us today uh, because you are part of the Ethnos community. No matter where you are watching this from, uh, you are a part of how we are seeking to God together uh, as a group uh, who's made up of people from all different places, uh, all different backgrounds. Uh, and so that's who we seek to be as Ethnos, a community for all peoples uh, who are all seeking to be moved by the love of Jesus uh, and how he wants to transform our local community and this world. And so uh, we are glad that you can be a part of it. We are live this morning, uh, Sunday morning uh, here in San Diego where it's nice and sunny uh, or wherever you are watching. And so uh, you can actually let other people know uh, it's a great time. If you're excited for what God is going to be doing today, uh, you can always comment uh, in our comment section or hit that share button and let other people know uh, that you'd love for them to join you as well. Uh, and that helps us out. Uh, today, we do have some things that to look forward to. We are going to be continuing our conversations in the Disrupt series, and we're going to talk about separating faith and culture. Uh, we also are going to be praying for one another um, and our different needs. Uh, but to start us off, uh, we're excited. We have a, a musical, some musical guests joining us today from Austin, Texas. Uh, it's a group called the Levites, and so here they are to lead us in our first song. Hi, Ethnos Church. I'm Craven Rory, and I'm here representing the Levites, and we are so excited to be with you this morning. Um, we met Eric uh, years ago at a um, missions conference, and we've been family ever since. So by extension, y'all like all my cousins. So anyway, uh, today's featured song um, was written by the late Reverend Dr. James Cleveland in 1980. And the song's title is No Ways Tired. And um, it is said that the inspiration for the song was an elderly woman who would go to work. She would walk to work every every single day. And uh, they kind of asked her, like, how how do you keep doing this? And she said, God. And so um, in honor of Black History Month, we want to say that we have been able to make all of these strides because of God and because he has sustained us over the years. So I hope you enjoy No Ways Tired with the Levites. Bye. <laughs> Aren't you glad that God promised to never leave nor forsake us? He's a faithful, faithful God. Right where you are, just lift your hands. He's there with you right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God, an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Come on, just say, He's my God. He's my God. Whatever comes your way, he's always going to be there for you. Come on, say, I don't. Nobody told me the road would be easy. They didn't expect easy. But they were they knew they were walking with the true and living God.
this far. I don't believe. I don't believe. I don't believe that he brought me this far. Too many dangers seen and unseen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you brought me this far. Hallelujah, indeed. Wow. Thank you, Levites, for joining us there from Austin, Texas, and for blessing us with that powerful song and reminding us that Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us. That's a song I actually grew up listening to um, in my church growing up as well as in my home. And so it, it really hit home for me. And I teared up um, sitting here listening to it. Listen, Ethos, it's been a, a season of difficulty and challenge. And we don't minimize that whatsoever. But neither do I minimize the fact that God has gotten us this far by faith. We've come this far by faith. That's a lyric from another song from our African-American heritage and spiritual experience. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. And so ethnos, I don't believe he's got us this far to leave us. I don't believe God will abandon us. He won't let us go. He won't leave us. There are many songs that stir my faith or many things that stir my faith. And one of those things I just gave away, it's songs, sitting with the songs and the stories of my ancestors, as well as sitting with songs and stories of today. And one of the songs that's gotten me through this last year is this next song. Anytime I felt like giving up or giving in, this is one of the songs that's kind of helped to get me through it. And so I hope it blessed you. I hope it blesses you as much as it blesses me. Why oh, why oh, oh, oh. 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 That's when grace came round. Just like a river, like a river washing over me. Oh, that's when grace came running, running. Grace came running after me. Grace just like a river. Grace just like a river, like a river, a river, river washing over me. Yeah. When I was lost and far away, drifting like a ship without a sail. Mm -hmm. 
When I was still your enemy That's when grace came That's when grace came Running after me When I was going my own way Running from my home Like a prodigal Oh, oh yeah Still I see you run to me And that's, that's when, when grace came. came That's when grace came That's when grace came running, running Grace came running after me Oh, grace came running after me Grace just like the river, like a, river. a river Washing over, over me Yeah, yeah. Caught in a love I can't explain Each and every day When I rise and fall oh, I know I'm carried all the way Cause grace, grace keeps, keeps running. running Grace keeps oh, running Grace just keeps on running Running Grace keeps running after me Oh, you me. keep on running Just like the river, like a, river. a river washing Ooh. over me. Ooh. Oh, that's when grace came, came running, running, came running after me. Oh, yes, it did. Oh, grace just like the river, like a river washing over me. Here we go at home, come on. Why oh, oh, why oh, 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 why oh, oh, why oh, 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 why oh, why oh, 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 why oh, why oh, 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 if it seems too good to be true, it's just like you. You're always surprising And if it seems too big to embrace It must be great And if it seems too good to be true It's just like you You're always surprising And if it seems too big to embrace Grace, it must be grace. That's when grace came running, running. Grace came running after me. Oh, grace just like a river, a river washing over me. That's when grace came. God's love truly is the amazing love that runs after us, that comes after us, that wants us to be embraced by the God who loves and created us. Let's join together in prayer. We thank you, God, for that grace. We thank you that you give us our strength, um, that in the times of need, in the times of trouble, uh, you are always there. You are listening. You are present. You are providing. And so, uh, we look to you and give you praise because of that. We know that you have done that in the past. We know that you're going to do that in the future. And so we pray that you would help us to keep looking to you for all of these things. We're honored to be able to know you and worship you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
Well, thank you uh, for singing with us. Uh, thank you for everyone that helped uh, make uh, these times possible. Uh, kids, you guys are dismissed. Uh, enjoy your time with your teachers on Zoom. Uh, for everyone else, uh, we would love to say hi. Uh, and so you can hop on into the comment section on Facebook Live uh, right now, and we would love to hear from you. Let us know how you're doing on this Super Sunday. It's always a Super Sunday uh, when we get to worship Jesus. Uh, and if you want more of those songs that you've heard, uh, they will be on our YouTube channel. And so uh, you can always go check it there. Uh, I believe we are trying to put up the uh, whole live stream services on there too. The recordings are also on Facebook. Um, but we would love to hear from you uh, and say hi for a little bit. Uh, if you don't feel like hopping in the comment section saying hi, we would love to hear from you, of course. Uh, but you can also pick up your phone. You can text somebody this morning. Uh, we want to remember that this isn't just a me on a screen and you wherever you're sitting uh, type of experience. We are a community uh, that are known by other people. And so we want to uh, hear from you, see others, uh, and connect with one another. And so you can text a friend or a coworker, uh, let them know that you're thinking about them as well. Um, but I will say hi to some of the people that are in the chat on Facebook today. Good to see all of you guys. Uh, John and Joseph, good to see you. Erica, Tracy, Margo, dancing in the chair. Absolutely, I was as well. Uh, good morning to Joy and Ren and Micah, Alex and Rihanna. Uh, to uh, Craven, awesome that you are glad and joining us uh, today. Thank you for that song. Thank you for leading us today. Uh, if you guys want to thank uh, Craven and the Levites, you can just hop on a chat right now and just say thank you. Uh, thank you to, or good morning, uh, let's see, to Eric. Uh, good morning to the Hog and the family, Margo, uh, Luke, Hammy. Uh, good to see all of you guys on here today. To, let's see, who else got on? Annie and Lily and the family. Um, it's Great to see all of you guys on. Uh, I always enjoy seeing your guys' names pop up and your little profile pictures because it reminds me of uh, who's in our community. It lets me know that you are on today, uh, that you value community as well. Uh, and uh, we will keep seeking how we can do that uh, during this season. Uh, yeah, good morning to Yvonne. Good morning uh, to Ruth and the entire family. Um, as well. Uh, for today, uh, we have a couple things. I actually want you to stay on your keyboards uh, or phone input sections uh, because we're actually going to ask uh, for you to help us too. Uh, we're going to spend some time in prayer today and for our prayer time, uh, we always pray for something going on in our local community or our wider community. Uh, today, uh, we're going to take some time to pray for one another and so the needs that you have and so I would love for you, actually, if you have something that you personally could use prayer for, you or your family, is to hop onto the comment section right now. There's about a 20 second delay before I see it here on the stream, but other people will see it right away. Let us know how we could be praying for you. Um, the, you know, the comments are on the internet, and so share just what you are comfortable sharing. Uh, but we would love to pray for one another. Uh, usually on a Sunday in person, uh, we would all be getting together in small groups, sharing uh, how we can pray for one another. And so uh, we want to do that here uh, as much as we can. Uh, I know we value one another's prayers uh, that other people know what's going on in our lives. And that's one of the things that we miss uh, during the season is not being able to have uh, just the random times of catching up uh, with one another. It's always got to be intentional through text or Zoom or whatever it is. Uh, and so we want to kind of keep up with one another, hear how things are going. Uh, and I will uh, read off some of the prayer requests off of the comment section. Uh, as you guys are typing to get those things going, uh, one thing uh, you can pray for me personally, just my prayer request for this morning is, uh, ironically, last week I shared about my knee injury and the day after I actually heard it. And so I uh, kind of sprained my knee this week and been hobbling around so you can pray for healing uh, for that. Uh, but we'd love to hear from you guys about what you could use prayer for uh, this morning. And so you could hop on into uh, the comment section and we will read um, some of them and pray for one another. Uh, we believe uh, that God calls us to lift one another up 
uh, in prayer. It's part of our communal experience of worshiping God. It's just not uh, me and God and just my prayers with him. Uh, it's also us as a group, as a family, uh, communally coming to God and lifting one another up. Uh, both to know that we are not alone, um, but that also we can be part of God's encouragement and strength uh, to each other. And so we would love to uh, hear from you. What are some ways um, that we can be praying for you? So I'm going to hop in here. Um, Cat Lady is my wife, Lydia, by the way, in case you don't know that when she is uh, typing some of the comments in the stream. All right. We're going to be praying for uh, Joshua's transitioning back to Wheaton. Absolutely. Uh, and just uh, finishing out senior year of school. And so we were praying for them. Um, absolutely. Uh, this week. Let's see. What are some other things that we could be praying for you for? Um, things that you have need for. Things that maybe have been a struggle or a difficulty lately. Things that you could use healing for. Uh, let us know. Let's see. There's another let's see, prayer request here for. Uh, for one of uh, someone's child uh, going through the terribly terrific twos. Uh, and so for the family's adjustment, you could be praying for that. Uh, you could be praying for, let's see, relief of pain. So someone mentions their health um, and their body. Another person mentions, let's see, another prayer request for guidance and trust in God's plan as I'm going through life transitions. Absolutely, we can pray for that. Uh, Pray for being grateful for being alive uh, and well, even with aches and pains, more aches and pains. Uh, absolutely. Let's see. Uh, praying for assignments that are due, a computer lab and an essay draft that are due this week, and prayer for mental health. Absolutely. Students need prayer for mental health. Uh, definitely all the time. Uh, let's see. Uh, a back surgery coming up this week. Absolutely, we'll be lifting you guys up. Pray for the surgeon, pray for the other doctors, everyone involved. Uh, yeah, that that goes safely uh, and that healing comes quickly. Prayer for mental and physical fatigue. Uh, yeah, especially uh, the extra that has been caused by the pandemic. Definitely hear you uh, and know that many have been experiencing that. Pray for wisdom. Uh, as we are trying to figure out childcare and maybe uh, moving closer to be closer to family, uh, praying for wisdom in that. Praying let's, for great granddaughter's parents. Um, yeah, and the separation from their daughter. Absolutely, praying for that. Uh, pray for the ability to lead at work in a godly fashion. For sure. Uh, pray for financial concerns. We'll definitely be praying for that. Praying for uh, one of the children, for someone's son, um, because their best friend is moving. Uh, yeah. So absolutely pray for that. There's definitely sadness uh, that comes from there. Uh, even though it's Zoom classes right now, we're uh, missing during these lonely times, these COVID times, lonely COVID times. Yeah. Um, pray for compassion and discernment um, absolutely especially through teaching through black history month february is black history month absolutely and so it, uh, that's one of the ways we celebrate uh, the strengths of parts of our community uh, that have often been uh, overlooked prayer for our kids that they would have opportunities and not feel disconnected from other children their age um, for sure so Thank you for you guys who have been typing. You can keep typing in your prayer requests. Uh, the best way that you can actually be praying right now, if you are able, uh, is to actually watch the feed for some of those prayer requests. You can pray for them by name. Uh, we try to give a little bit of anonymity sometimes by not uh, mentioning everyone's names um, so that you can feel comfortable sharing. But you can hop on there, pray for those prayer requests, the ones I just mentioned and read off. Uh, you can pray for other ones that you might know about that you have. If you are with some other people, you guys can pray as a group, pray for one another's needs. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give some space for that. We're going to give some time um, for you to pray either by yourself or to pray with the people you are watching with. 
Uh, we're gonna lift these things up to God. And the cool thing about us being in all different locations is our voices are gonna be lifted up from all these different places at the same time to God for all of these needs. And so let's do that together and I'll bring us um, back in a couple of minutes. So let's pray. Let's join together in prayer. Father God, we thank you that you see each of us. You knew us before we were born, and you have guided our lives up until this point. So we believe, God, that you have been present, and you have been available, and that you have been providing. And so we come to you with all of these different needs uh, that you see and that you hear that you already know about but that we want to lift up to you earnestly, believing that you hear us uh, and that you are able to provide. So uh, we pray, God, for those who are hurting and need healing. Uh, We pray for that surgery coming up this week. God, it would go well. We pray for those uh, who have been uh, dealing with different physical ailments and aches and pain. God, that you would give them strength. Uh, We pray for your provision and relationships uh, from those who have friends moving away, those thinking about their family members, God, that you would provide for them. 
Uh, we pray for uh, the different things going on in our community, uh, for the inequalities uh, that need writing, that you'd give encouragement and strength for those who are struggling against them and working to make change. Uh, we pray for people just as they seek to be uh, influencers for you in their workplaces, in their school. We pray, God, for the needs coming up this week for school assignments uh, and work assignments and projects um, and things around the house that need doing, God. We pray for your strength. We pray uh, especially for uh, peace and hope in the midst of all the anxiety that comes with this season as well. We know it's been hard to be disconnected uh, physically, God. Uh, we pray that you would be present and alive for each person that needs you in every way that we need you. So we look to you, believing that you hear us, uh, asking for faith to keep following you in all of the difficult. We thank you for what you provide. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Well, thank you uh, for praying together. Keep lifting up these things. If you missed some of those prayer requests, you didn't have enough time to pray for them all, you can rewatch uh, the live stream later uh, in the recorded video uh, and go through and pray uh, for each person. I know there are many of you who pray regularly for the needs that you know about. So thank you for people um, that are mentioning the prayer requests. Thank you for everyone that is praying for them. Yeah, and... Uh, I encourage you to keep sharing those things. Keep reaching out to others for prayer. Uh, it doesn't have to be here on a Sunday. Uh, it could just be some of the people that you know. Uh, it could be the times where you reach out to other friends and ask them how you could be praying for them as well. Uh, most people, even if they don't follow Jesus, have no problem uh, saying what they could use prayer for. Uh, and most people will usually appreciate it. So uh, one way that we keep staying connected during the season. All right, one more item for your keyboards. Um, we would love to hear some more comments. Is We're going to transition to a time uh, reading the Bible and talking about it. Uh, and so we're going to start with a uh, question, uh, kind of an open question. You can keep it as light or as deep as you want. Keep it as light as you would like. Um, and so a question uh, today that we'd love to hear some different perspectives on, and I made it both positive and negative. So you can think of it in either direction. Do you have a favorite or least favorite part of your cultural heritage? Uh, we often highlight culture regularly here at Ethnos. And so uh, we have people from lots of different backgrounds that grew up in lots of different places uh, that bring uh, your culture with you wherever you go. And so if you are here in San Diego with us, you have brought uh, your experiences with you. Uh, wherever you live, wherever you're joining us from, uh, our upbringing, our traditions, our beliefs are all an important part of who we are. Uh, and so I'm curious of what are some of the things that you find in your culture that you love, the things that you think about uh, that remind you of uh, the awesome family that you came from or the peoples that you're a part of. Uh, sometimes there's some things that we don't like, uh, maybe about our cultural heritage. I know uh, many have had experiences and journeys like that, uh, thinking about the parts that you maybe wanted to get away from. Uh, and so we're going to be talking about both of those aspects today. And so I am curious uh, to hear some of the things that you guys have to share. Uh, for myself, I know growing up, and so I am Chinese American. Uh, my parents uh, were all born here in the United States. Uh, and so part of the, I guess, journey for me growing up was thinking about uh, which parts uh, of me and my thinking and my family were very Asian uh, and which parts uh, were very American and sorting through like which parts do I like and which parts uh, do I not like. Uh, there were communal aspects of being Asian that I didn't like. I didn't like when my parents maybe uh, were talking to other friends about what was going on in our family uh, because I preferred uh, for my, uh, not secrets, but the things going on in my life uh, to not be talked about uh, with others. Um, but some other people like having those communal aspects. So I'm curious what some of the things for you uh, growing up were uh, either that you look back on now, that you're aware of now, or that you're aware of growing up. And so I am going to hop onto the comment section and read, let's see, some of them. Uh, all right, so...
Um, is this particularly because we're talking about Super Bowl Sunday? No, it is not. Super Bowl is copyrighted, so we don't want to get in trouble with them. But um, we're going to be talking, yes, uh, partially about American culture today. Uh, Super Bowl Sunday is an American cultural phenomenon. It's American football. Uh, that is happening this afternoon, by the way. And so I uh, hope you guys have uh, fun enjoying that. Uh, one person mentions uh, their native Hawaiian culture. Um, and I'm not sure if they're typing more things that they love. Um, or they just love their culture, which is great. See, someone mentions loving their family closeness in their culture. Uh, both people who are blood related and not blood related that we treat them like family. Uh, but one of the downsides has been uh, machismo, which is uh, kind of being macho or a manliness uh, that can uh, be expected in that culture. Uh, someone mentions loving the joy that they see in creative expression of their peoples. Um, both in the happiness and in the sadness. That sounds great. Uh, one person mentions loving the strength and resilience of their culture, that they always get back up. Uh, I think that's amazing and a great strength. Someone mentions uh, loving that African-American culture is communal and most everything we do is centered around sharing meals together. That is a great thing. Uh, someone mentions uh, not liking the shame-based regard and communication and an overemphasis on meritocracy, which is like achievement. Uh, let's see, someone mentions Lunar New Year always being cool in the, the celebrations. That is a, another cultural phenomenon that comes up around the same time as the Super Bowl. I don't think that's intentional. Uh, but Lunar New Year that many Asian cultures celebrate is coming up this week. Uh, some of the celebrations have already started. Uh, let's see. I'm going to read through these faster. Someone mentions being very family-oriented and being friendly. Uh, that's great. Uh, someone loving uh, having that African-Americans have their own version of the English language. Absolutely. Uh, someone mentions their Filipina-American culture and the value of hospitality. Um, mm, 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 people amening for food. Food and celebration. Um... Yeah, things that come along with the Chinese New Year uh, celebration, Japanese New Year. Yeah, but some of the culture uh, includes some of the history. So the downside can be, for instance, what happened to the Japanese here in America in a tournament. I know we've mentioned that uh, recently. Oh, there are like a whole bunch of things going on. So thanks everyone that's typing um, in these things, yeah, some mentions the difficulties and struggles that regularly happened at home. Um, people enjoying hospitality of Hawaiian culture. Oh, hospitality, care for the land, loving one another, respect and harmony, um, honoring elders, great things. Um, but that sometimes came along with things like racism and the culture, cultures clashing. And yeah, and there's absolutely uh, one of the things we're actually talking about um, that we've been talking about are some of the far-reaching effects of slavery. And so uh, sometimes this perpetuates some of those negative things. Um, absolutely. People loving food, music, and that their family was has always been matriarchal, so led by the women, uh, which is neat, um, but not liking how it um, can be a bit conservative. I'm, I'm assuming it's culturally conservative. Uh, more talking about respect, honor, hospitality, meals. Right. Keep going in here. Um, these are all great. Um, yeah. And so we today are going to be talking about this idea. We're going to be talking about culture. We're going to be talking about how all of us have different cultures. I love actually just seeing the variety of answers. Uh, and so when we all think back on who we are and how we have grown, grown up, all of us have unique experiences. Even people that grow up in the same places, uh, sometimes even in the same families, uh, can have different experiences of what you've grown up with, what you've come to believe. Uh, and that is an important part of our faith. Uh, it's an important part of how we understand God. And so we're going to talk today about these ideas of faith and culture uh, and what they have to do with disrupting the status quo. Uh, yes, part of the importance of talking about it is our context in America, where we are um, coming to you from right now, uh, because Christian faith and American culture uh, have often be been entangled 
they've crossed over with one another, sometimes they've gotten mixed up. Uh, we are going to talk about that um, because it can be important at times to separate the two and notice where they've become too entangled and to be able to see which is which. It's also important in our global context as a diverse multicultural uh, community. When we come together to worship Jesus, uh, we actually all bring our whole histories, the histories of our family, the histories of our people groups, uh, the histories that have happened in the places that we've grown up. Uh, that includes the traditions, the languages, uh, the beauty of our practices and how we come together. Uh, and so when we have all of these things, uh, how should we be thinking about them? How can we pay attention to them? All of us have a view of the world that is shaped by the beliefs and the traditions where we grew up, right? That's part of the idea of culture. All of us are formed by those experiences that we've had, by the people we've been around. In the same way, all of us have a view of God that has also been influenced by that culture. Uh, and so it's important for us uh, to pay attention to it. Why? Because if we don't notice the influences that we have, uh, the status quo actually just naturally occurs. Where faith is influenced uh, by our culture uh, in ways where uh, the preconceived notions that we bring in end up shaping how we worship, who we think God is, how we treat other people. Sometimes these things make it more difficult uh, to practice uh, our spirituality, to connect with God. Sometimes they give us a distorted view. Uh, sometimes they actually help uh, and they make it uh, a strength, ways that we can uh, do that easier. And so we're going to be talking about all of these things. Uh, we are going to look to Jesus as we do uh, to see what he has to say about uh, this topic uh, and why he cares about it. Uh, we believe that he does and we're going to read a story uh, because our cultures are both uh, what make us up um, but they're also what uh, guides us in the future. Uh, so they're not only about our past, they're about our present and our future. And so understanding and reflecting on them um, is important. Uh, and so we're going to start with a story uh, from the Bible uh, and a story about Jesus and an interaction, a clash that he has uh, with some of the religious leaders of his time, uh, especially around this topic um, because they were creating some cultural and social norms um, for the people around them to follow. And so uh, reading our passage today for us from Mark chapter 7 verses 1 through 9 is going to be Andrea and Brian. And so let's listen in. Mark 7, 1 to 9. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. And he continued, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. All right. And so thank you uh, to Andrea and Brian for reading that for us. Uh, and so we have a story from Jesus, and the story is about culture. Uh, Jesus uh, and the first disciples were all of Jewish heritage. So this is happening in ancient Israel about 2,000 years ago. Uh, and the Jewish faith uh, that the, is the beginning of the context for Christianity uh, comes about uh, after thousands of years of Israel's history or Jewish history. And we see what it has culminated into in this story. We have two groups. Uh, we have uh, Jesus mentioning uh, these two groups, the Pharisees 
uh, who were kind of a subset of the Jews, like a denomination that we might have now uh, in Christianity, who were focused on the strict application of Jewish commandments. Uh, if you go through the Old Testament, there are lots of things that look like rules, do this, don't do that. Uh, and they were very focused on making sure everyone followed those. Uh, the other group that Jesus uh, runs into here are the teachers of the law. And so they were just the ones in the wider Jewish community who were in charge of passing on the knowledge of the scriptures uh, in the Jewish faith. They were the ones who taught and interpreted uh, the scriptures. And so Jesus uh, runs into them. Uh, they actually come and they approach him and his disciples while they are eating. And they are there pointing out during the meal that Jesus' disciples had not washed their hands. Now, um, I want to be, <laughs> break this down a little bit. So I want to be clear, this wasn't like a sanitation type thing. This wasn't like, you know, the signs in restaurants where it says workers have to wash their hands before going back to work. Uh, this was not a sanitation thing. It wasn't a like COVID-19 like thing either. This was actually about uh, Jewish religious practices uh, that they thought ceremonially, uh, uh, the same way that maybe some of you pray before every meal, that you have to or Jews have to wash their hands before uh, every meal. And so they're pointing this out and calling essentially saying you have dirty hands or like defiled hands. Uh, and Jesus then replies with this. He turns around and he calls them hypocrites. Uh, he says, you guys are mixing things up uh, and says that you are so focused on rules that you are no longer truly worshiping God. Now, what is going on here? We're going to break it down. Uh, we're going to explain a couple of things from the passage and then talk about what it means uh, for our wider question that we are talking about today. So a couple of observations from the passage. Uh, first, uh, what is this, where does this issue come from? Uh, why are the Jewish leaders here talking about washing of hands? Uh, the washing of hands in verse 3 um, is most likely uh, conflating a specific direction that the priests, the Jewish priests, uh, had back in the Old Testament. Uh, and that direction was that priests are supposed to wash their hands before they oversee the temple sacrifices, right? And so before they do the ceremony of like animal sacrifices in the temple, they were supposed to wash their hands. That's basically the only real time where the Old Testament directs the people to wash their hands. And what the Pharisees were doing, they were taking this one specific thing for priests for a specific ritual, and they were applying it to all Jews that all Jews are supposed to wash their hands before every meal. Uh, and so nowhere uh, was that one of the directions, but they had made it into one over the years. And so I know this is hundreds of years and thousands of years later, but they had taken some obscure specific rule and applied it to everyone and said this is a requirement for everyone to do. Uh, now, how did this happen that way? Uh, in verse 5, Jesus mentions that what they are doing, what these leaders are doing, is they are trying to pass on the traditions of the elders. They're following these traditions, things that have been passed along for years. Uh, and this is how the status quo comes about, right? At one point, one teacher says, hey, yeah, we should be washing our hands, right? Just as the priests are commanded to wash their hands, we should wash our hands too uh, before we do different things, maybe before we eat. And that gets passed on to the next generation. That gets passed on the next generation. And before you know it, they're requiring all Jews to wash their hands before all meals. And so that had been passed along and become the status quo. And that's important because how did that get passed down? It got passed down, those traditions got passed down through those elders, through those teachers. Uh, when we have things that come about and become the status quo in our culture, in our churches and in our wider cultural context, one question should be, how did those things come about? We need to know how did we arrive at them? And in this case, uh, Jesus is pointing out that it was the teachers. The teachers and the leaders were actually passing these traditions on from teacher to teacher. And so the ones who ended up distorting the message were the religious leaders. Um, and 
back then i really feel for all the people because the religious leaders were the only ones that had access really uh, to reading the scriptures right they didn't have um, bibles they didn't have like i don't know if you know how amazing a bible phone app is right like you can just tap things and you have uh in the entire bible like there in the blink of an eye right they had literal scrolls that were kept in the temples and the synagogues and only the teachers had access to they would bring them out here's how regular people would hear the scriptures they would bring them out once a week at the gatherings someone would read it and those teachers would then tell everyone what it means it's kind of similar to how we have messages and sermons now and so they were completely reliant on what the teachers taught and interpreted they couldn't go check it on their own i tell you guys check everything i am talking about uh, you should have your bible open have your apps open right and you're following along in the scriptures uh, they didn't have access to that they weren't able to do it so they couldn't question what they were taught and so when the leaders teach things that are distorted views right they turn those things in traditions everyone believes it because it's passed down but no one uh, knows what they're truly supposed to be doing and so uh, that's how it came about and that's what leads to Jesus calling it out right Jesus calls that he, he quotes a verse uh, from Isaiah 29 and he says, you guys are basically hypocrites. Uh, you guys are moving people away from God instead of toward them. So all of these uh, distortions of culture and tradition that they have imposed on the people have actually made people far. So in verse 6, it said their hearts are far from me. Right In verse 7, their teachings are merely human rules. And so they've been doing these things and it's been getting in the way of following God. Uh, these rules have actually created a, a, almost a different type of religion or spirituality uh, that God never intended. It's actually getting in the way of people worshiping God. Uh, these Pharisees were doing things like not only demanding washing of hands, uh, we see other uh, run-ins with Jesus' disciples where the Pharisees are emphasizing things like not doing any work on the Sabbath, even if your animal falls down or someone is sick and you need to help them. Uh, there's times where uh, Jesus and disciples are hungry and so they pick like grain from a field and eat it and the Pharisees are like you're not supposed to do any field work on the Sabbath uh, and so they were nitpicking at all of these rules uh, in order to say hey you are actually not following God's commands by doing all of these things and so over the years over the centuries they end up creating new faith and cultural traditions that were mixed up um, these things that were practices uh, in the past that they create more rules for more requirements to get in the way between people and God to say hey you're not following these commands perfectly you are far from God in implying that they think that they are close to God right? and so there's a number of things that we can learn from this uh, what do we notice in the story of the Pharisees? What does it mean for us and our faith now? Uh, and that includes the cultures where we exist in and we live currently. That includes the cultural backgrounds that we come from. Uh, and so uh, three things for us to recognize uh, for ourselves, the lessons that we can learn. First is to recognize how culture has shaped our practices. Uh, I think this is really important as we think about following Jesus. How has our culture and our background shaped our practices? Uh, for instance, I have been in churches where even if it's never said out loud, uh, you were expected to wear nice clothes, right? For women, that meant dresses. For uh, men, that meant nice slacks, a button-down shirt, maybe a tie. Uh, and it might not ever be said that that was a rule, but you can tell. Uh, and the reason you can tell is everyone else is doing it. Uh, and if you come in like not as nice of clothes, uh, you might get looked down on, uh, you know, people give you the side eye uh, and you learn that you are supposed to do that when you come to church. Now, dressing up to come to church, there's no problem with that whatsoever. It is totally a fine thing to do. Uh, but when we make those things into rules, uh, they can actually get in the way. Uh, because we take cultural practices and we make them into spiritual requirements. 
uh, larger, think about the larger societal context. Uh, it's important also to think about how our maybe national cultures, our surrounding cultures have, have intruded on uh, our faith. Uh, in America, uh, some things that get mixed up, things like patriotism and maybe American holidays, right, have been mixed up with church sometimes. Uh, that uh, for some, uh, as was mentioned in the comments, for some churches today, the Super Bowl, which is American football, that's all it is, it's an American football championship game, uh, becomes a sacred Sunday, right? And churches uh, make a part of how they celebrate um, together. That includes other holidays too that maybe celebrate um, the nation. I've seen churches with the American flag uh, waving inside of the church. Uh, maybe you've been in a place like that. And there's these things that end up getting mixed up. Are they supposed to be together like that? Uh, the closest equivalent I can think of um, for mixing up American culture and church tradition uh, is if like the early church back in the day celebrated the Roman Empire, right? And like had days where they were like, yes, everyone should follow Caesar and celebrate, um, yeah, this place that we are a part of. Uh, even in, and they never do that, by the way. So this, in the Bible, they never do that. Even when you think about the Old Testament and the people of Israel, uh, they never did that as well. They had holidays, yes. They did have national holidays, but those holidays were never yay people of Israel holidays. They were yay God is good holidays. Uh, they were holidays that celebrated God's saving acts, his provision, the ways that he had guided them. And so that includes all of the Jewish holidays that are still around um, today. And so these just different aspects of our surrounding culture, we need to be paying attention because they can shape our spiritual practices and our habits, right? Western ideas of individualism and personal rights uh, have made it so that one of the main ways, at least in American church, that uh, our sp spirituality is regular practice is to have uh, an individual personal prayer time, right? And reading of the Bible. And I think those are good things, uh, absolutely. But it can miss on some of the communal aspects of faith and worship. Or if you come from maybe some other cultural influences, maybe your country of origin, uh, you have some practices that have become part of your faith traditions. You might have grown up in places where, uh, for instance, uh, prayer is very similar to meditation or um, some other practices in, in mysticism. Or you might have come uh, from a culture or tradition where superstitions uh, affect the way that we worship, maybe by having uh, figurines and icons, uh, or uh, yeah, by thinking about the physical spaces that we are in. And so it's important for us to recognize that our practices, the way that we live out our faith, can be affected uh, by our backgrounds. And pay attention to which things does God call important and which ones does he not that we should hold a bit more loosely? Uh, that includes uh, the second lesson that we can recognize that we should recognize how culture has shaped our beliefs. So not just our practices, but what we believe about especially who God is. When we view God from only our own worldview, we actually miss some of the beauty of the gospel. That's why I love the multicultural church. That's why I love hearing about uh, your guys' different experiences uh, and the different ways uh, that we, that you understand God, because uh, we can learn from one another. Uh, I do a lot of times talk and think about um, kind of three different cultural paradigms, uh, talk about three different things that affect our beliefs, uh, guilt, shame, and fear. Uh, some of us maybe come from the type of cultural background, um, you know, steeped in Western individualism, focus on rules, personal behavior, personal responsibility, and those things can be great, but they can twist faith or an understanding of God. Uh, that's a lot of times where legalism comes from. Uh, if you maybe grew up in a place uh, where reading the Bible was seen and as a set of rules, here's all the things that the Bible teaches, and I need to follow every single one of them uh, in order to prove that I'm truly a Christian or in order to qualify uh, to go to heaven, um, that I need to follow every single one. Uh, uh, that Western individualism can also 
cause us to focus only on my own salvation, right? It's about our personal faith uh, and maybe cause us to neglect thinking about others um, and caring for others. Or uh, that individualism can also cause a colonialism or imperialism uh, where we go to other places and we are the experts. Um, yes, we're bringing God's love. Yes, we are teaching them about Jesus. Um, but we are the ones in charge. We are the ones with the resources. Uh, so again, it puts us individually at the center of the story instead of putting Jesus at the center. Right? Jesus never intended that we would live as slaves to the rules, uh, that we would live this life where we are the center. Instead, he died so that we can be free from that, so that we can know love. Uh, some of us maybe come from a different cultural context, and I know all of our experiences are, are mixed, made up of bits and pieces, a mix of all these different things. Uh, but you might have come from an honor shame culture. Honor cultures are those that are very collective uh, and maybe seek harmony uh, and togetherness. Uh, it's about what brings recognition uh, to my group. That could also mean not rocking the boat um, and having very peaceful, uh, calm settings. And those, again, can all be good things, um, but they can maybe change or alter our view of God and the gospel uh, because they can tend towards a very shaming view of sin uh, where people who appear to have it all together are celebrated. Those are the role models. But people who have problems in life, uh, we kind of don't talk about them. We just like hide them off to the side. Uh, it's why earlier in Mark, if you read the Gospel of Mark, the religious leaders are shocked that Jesus hangs out with people like sinners. And when I say sinners, I'll put air quotes because it's not truly just people who are sinners. Everyone's a sinner. It's people who seemed like obvious sinners. It, from their lifestyle, it appeared that they were the very bad people and we are the good people. And so what's the goal is to stay away from people like that. Uh, we want to highlight the people who seem like they are doing well. Um, but not the people who aren't. And this can give us a view of sin where we see ourselves as unacceptable because all of us actually do have sin. All of us uh, are not perfect. And we can think that we're unworthy of God's love, that we don't deserve his affection and his provision. Uh, and so we can push ourselves down and see ourselves uh, only in negative light because of that. That can also lead to Maybe not admitting our own sin. We know we have problems, but we don't want other people to see them. And so we never address uh, our problems, our conflicts, because it'll upset the harmony of the group. That can hinder our relationship with God because we don't want to be honest with him about what we know about ourselves. And the gospel of Jesus is actually the opposite, right? God wants us to confess our struggles because he loves us in them. He knows everything about us. He sees that already, and he's willing to accept us. No matter how we look on the outside, he knows how we look on the inside. And third, some of us might have had a lot of influence uh, from power and fear cultures. Uh, cultures that are highly aware of the spiritual realm utilize their strength to face challenges and overcome. Uh, to that, think about how uh, that strength uh, leads to influencing others and growing in leadership. And those, again, are all great things. Uh, but a tendency can be for our view of God to be distorted because uh, we tend towards fear and living in fear and anxiety. Uh, in a spiritual sense, that can come because we're afraid of the things that we've done wrong make it so that we deserve evil in this world, that we are going to be attacked by maybe evil spiritual forces, uh, or just that bad omens are going to follow us, uh, that negative consequences are always going to be in our lives um, because we are not strong enough. Our faith is not strong enough. Uh, we think that we uh, are not good enough. Um, when bad things happen, we think it's our fault and that we caused them. And it can lead to uh, actually the opposite as well, a sense of pride that then if we can't show weakness and we can't be spiritually weak, uh, that we need to always be strong. 
we need to show that we are strong uh, because that is how we are going to protect ourselves. And in a faith sense, that can look like we always need to show that we are spiritually really connected to God. Uh, we need to have the best prayers. Uh, we need to uh, be singing the loudest. Uh, we need to be uh, yeah, showing very obviously uh, that we are very spiritual people. And that distorts the view of God because it makes it so that we earn or that we are in control of what we get uh, from God. Uh, where in our strength, uh, we believe it's from ourselves instead of from God. Um, and then in our weakness, we actually have a hard time connecting with God because we believe that he doesn't want us to be weak. Do you identify with any of these? Uh, maybe cultural contexts. And a question that we can ask are in what ways have our cultures shaped our beliefs, our view of who God is? Uh, and it's something to be aware of because when we don't, again, it becomes the status quo. If we don't pay attention to what is influencing us, uh, we just go along with the status quo. Um, we might end up telling or living or perpetuating that story of God that is shaped more by our culture and our backgrounds than of who he truly is. But that's not the end of the story um, because culture influences us and our view of God, yes, sometimes in negative ways, but also in positive ways as well. And so the last uh, bit I want to mention um, is that I think it's also important for us to recognize how culture has shaped our strengths. Many of you guys actually highlighted these things already, right? At Ethnos, we talk about uh, culture and all of the diversity that God brings into the body of Christ, what makes us unique. Uh, yes, our hurts and pains, but also our gifts and our strengths and our unique expressions. And I love the things that you guys shared for how you love parts of your culture, because those are all things that can strengthen the body of Christ. Right? All those positives can be things uh, that God is using to make you unique, to bring a unique perspective, and to teach the rest of us in the body of Christ how to be better at loving one another and loving God. Uh, for instance, some of you guys actually mentioned cultures that have been through so much hardship, yet are resilient and are strong. And your strength is an example to others in the church. Uh, I believe that to be true here in America, uh, where many of the minority uh, and uh, immigrant church traditions uh, have been ones that show us what strength and adversity looks like. The African-American church, uh, the Latino churches, uh, the Native American believers have shown us uh, what does it look like to continue to have faith, to continue to pursue God, even in all the history of struggles. You have an important strength to share with the rest of the church. Uh, for cultures with very direct forms of communication, uh, you have helped us to be honest with ourselves and with one another uh, in admitting our failings and being able to process them and to heal. And that's something that many others in the body of Christ need to be taught uh, and to learn from. Uh, some of our cultures have brought a very highly collective way of thinking. Uh, and that is so important to be able to think about how we're interconnected with other people uh, in the family of God, how we can serve other people and make sure we are watching out for and caring for other people's needs. And so your uh, cultural background is a strength that the rest of the church needs. Uh, because as we recognize how our culture has influenced who we are, and subsequently recognizing how it's shaped who we believe God is, God has a redemptive story for all of us. That includes the ways we've gotten culture and faith mixed up that maybe we shouldn't. That includes the way he shaped us to have a unique story that is different than others. Um, God uses that, uses all of these parts of our journeys uh, to show us how together collectively we actually all ha can have a better view of our one Lord and King, Jesus Christ. That he is the one who brings all of the stories together. No matter what our past, uh, no matter what our unique personality, our culture, uh, the traits that we bring, he can redeem all of those things. 
And so I know I started asking a question about some of the things that we like and that we don't like. Uh, in all of those things, uh, and this is a lesson I've had to learn over the years, God can use all of it. The parts that we've run from, the parts that we wanted to hide, the parts that we maybe want to do the opposite of, in addition to the parts that we love, he can use all of that because his redeeming story of Jesus is one where he changes all of our pieces that are scattered, all of the pieces that are broken, how he puts us together and he turns us into his church, his people who are going to be part of changing the world. And so we're going to pause. I do have some other thoughts uh, for reflection time, but we're going to pause uh, for some of your questions. Uh, and uh, you can do that by hopping on the comment section and posting some questions. And my wife, Lydia, who's been doing an awesome job, um, not only with the computer, she was helping with setup because I couldn't do as much as the setup things today. Uh, and so she's been amazing with that. Uh, we'd love some of your questions um, on this topic. Uh, I will say, um, before we jump into that, there is about a 20 second delay, so go ahead and start typing. Uh, but yeah, I think one of the things that's pressing on many of our minds is the American culture um, and that has, I think, in many unhealthy ways, uh, been mixed up with church uh, here in the United States. Uh, I don't want to focus all of the message just on that, uh, because I do think that there's actually many of us who are also new to that context and didn't grow up with that. Um, and so I think it's important to keep paying attention to the current dynamics. Uh, what are the things that are truly from the Bible? Which are the things that are not? Uh, yeah. And I think that's an important thing for us in all places, all contexts, uh, to continue to do. All right, so thanks for hopping on and reading our questions. Do we have any questions ready to go? None on the stream, but I have a comment and then wondering if you can comment on this too. So I appreciate that the culture is not just our cultural heritage, like our ethnic culture, um, culture we grew up with, but I think it's also from what we've been talking about, um, it's the whatever spaces we've been in. So there's like mm -hmm. micro cultures and macro cultures. And so micro would be example with like our family of origin, um, whomever that is, right? Um, whether we're adopted or, you know, we're uh, our biological parents. Um, so there's that all the way, you know, through like what was our culture at church? You know, we've talked about some of that. And I believe that the church definitely, each, each church has its own culture and that shapes our experiences. And then there's like systems um, too, like the church as a system um, and um, educational systems. And there's just so much there. Um, and I, I think that um, for me, it's like a lifelong journey, like just trying to piece together and, and see both the positives and the negatives that have contributed from um, the micro and like a meso and a medium and then the macro systems. Um, and so the part I, I was wondering um, about that you could comment on is how um, and how how do the different systems interact with each other and sometimes maybe even amplify as a result, right? You know, yeah. you and I have talked about this a lot in our conversations, um, but then also like how does that impact how much of a hold perhaps that, you know, a particular cultural view um, can have? Yeah, and it's a great question. Um, thanks for actually helping define more clearly uh, culture. I didn't go through all of those details. I mean, you kind of um, did just in like the explanation, just right. not that yeah. vocabulary. And so yeah. we are influenced by all of these different things, right? All of the places we've been, the people we've been around, even, you know, the friends we've been around, um, family members, um, but things like education, the systems, um, media that we, you know, yeah. see, oh, yeah. um, traditions that are passed in our families, all of those things. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And it's interesting because, uh, you know, you talk about multiple of those things kind of adding together and amplifying one another. And that's absolutely true. So there's parts uh, that what we come to believe isn't just shaped by, uh, let's say our parents tell us to believe something and then we believe it, uh, maybe, you know, partially. Uh, that belief is solidified when we actually hear it from more places, right? So for instance, uh, individual meritocracy, right, where we uh, earn what we get, right? Uh, might have been taught to us by our parents that we need to work hard because when we work hard, then we will have more. Uh, but that might be also then affirmed by other parts of our culture. Our schools might teach us that, right? Because they give us grades. Uh, our media teaches that, teaches us that. Maybe the government, uh, right? Because if you worked hard, then you don't need to be on unemployment or you need you don't need 
you know, insurance for this or that. You can like earn it on your own. Uh, and so all of these things actually reinforce them. And that actually makes it much harder to break down. Um, the more ways that things have been reinforced, uh, the harder it is actually for us to recognize uh, what's influenced us uh, and to get out of some of those mindsets. And so when we've seen it in our family and in our schools and in our workplaces um, and at church, right, like all of these things um, make it much harder to actually break those things down uh, and escape from them. And it's not that all of them need to be changed, um, but even recognizing that they are there. It's like a fish mm -hmm. doesn't recognize it's in water. Uh, we don't recognize a lot of times the culture that we are in just because we're in it. And it is the status quo and it's all that we know. And so uh, I do think it's interesting because part of the way that that breaks down, um, I think actually does happen as each person reflects. There is an individual part of that process that we recognize for ourselves. Hey, yeah, what are the influences I've had uh, and what can I do about them? Um, but they can, it can take sometimes much longer to actually break down what has taken maybe a shorter amount of time to build up. I also think too, like that if there's conflicting messages um, in whatever, you know, system we're talking about, um, they can get very um, confusing too. And so, especially, I, I think for me, just speaking of experience, just like working out of a particular culture, um, but then still having another culture that's just also very powerful. And so yeah. it's just, it's, it's, um, it's, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and, trying to use vocabulary without cursing, but and, like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's really hard. It's really confusing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, um, for, in, for example, one example of that, that's a typical story of, let's say, uh, children of immigrants, right, into a new country because you have uh, some cultural influences from your family and your, and that country of origin. Um, but also from the new culture uh, that kids are growing up in. And so uh, those messages can conflict and they can be hard. They lead to some a lot of identity questions about, uh, for me, right, am I more Chinese or am I more American? Uh, which parts of that am I supposed to follow? Uh, and so recognizing how we process those things is actually really important too. You know. um, a comment, two comments. Uh, because worship or honor of God is an outward expression of our inward devotion to him, then every cultural expression allows us to experience different aspects of God. Um, we're creating God's image and the likeness of God. Yeah. And so that's the interesting part. So I love this comment. Um, and that's because God does create all of humanity in his image, right? Um, there's also all parts of his beauty that are in different people, right? And so different cultural expressions, um, as this comment mentions, uh, are different ways. And it's not that some are better than others, right? There are multiple ways to worship God. Uh, for example, if we think about music and some of the ways that we um, sing different songs, uh, hearing a song uh, that comes from a uh, black gospel um, setting and singing songs that come from Middle Eastern persecution and singing songs uh, that come uh, from Latin America, like all of those give us a different uh, picture or a, another part of the picture of how we can worship God. I know I've benefited so much. Uh, I grew up certain ways and maybe only knew certain types of music and worship and uh, praying to God. And as I've met more people and experienced more different ways of doing that, it's given me a bigger, fuller picture of who God is and how I can connect with him as well. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking that the traditional American arrogance and belief that everyone should believe as we believe Maybe the dynamics that creates a world where people aren't allowed to have differing opinions or views is destructive to the former way of healthy debate and ultimately in mixing these thoughts. Sorry, into mixing these thoughts into a religious realm that says um, that religion has to be practiced in ways that don't line up with biblical teaching. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so one of the dangers um, and probably one of the main dangers uh, that uh, we saw both in the Jewish context, right, for Jesus as he was talking, uh, and that we see somewhat today is that if one cultural paradigm for worshiping Jesus becomes the dominant, right, it can turn into a situation where then it's an, imposed on everyone or everyone mm -hmm. feels that they have to follow that way yeah. or see things only for that lens. And so one of the things I've been doing actually uh, in recent years is trying to read more interpretations of the Bible that don't come from 
just American and European commentators, right, and theologians. Uh, how do different people view the Bible in different parts of the world? Um, that can include, when we think about music, that's one reason we intentionally uh, sing songs that don't just come, again, from Western contexts. And these are important um, to highlight because uh, I recognize, I fully confess, like, existing in America has been a dominant culture in this world, right? You can see it in movies, songs, celebrities, right? They're known around the world. And that actually can be dangerous. Uh, for example, uh, I've been in other places uh, in this world where we were singing, worshiping together with people from other uh, ethnicities. And when it came time to sing, we were singing American songs. Uh, they might have been translated into a different language, right? They might have been uh, kind of in a native language, um, but they were still the songs that were written in the Western world. And that can be helpful, right? That uh, people are learning those things, but the same, you know, 20 songs that play on Christian radio in America shouldn't be the only songs that people are singing around the world. Uh, and so, yeah, we need to pay attention to how what we do, um, yes, is an expression of our individual backgrounds and faiths, um, but doesn't need to be the only way uh, that other people, um, yeah, live their faith. As I grew up in a faith tradition that highlighted the emphasis of scripture defining who God is, but not so much about how we can learn from believers who are different from us. In fact, even antagonists to that idea. So it's so interesting to me, interesting to me that those ideas work well together and I'm still getting used to that. Yeah. And it's also not something that, um, one, we do like with bad intentions, right, on our own. Uh, we actually only know what we know. We can only view the world the way that we view the world, right? Uh, and so it's not our fault that we haven't, like, changed that. Um, what we can do is seek to learn and uh, from others and become more aware. And so, for example, there's some paradigms, for instance, when we read the Bible, absolutely, we should be getting our view of God from the Bible. Um, but growing up, I actually mainly had a, a Western uh, view of reading the Bible. And so my view of relationship with God, who God was, what the gospel is, all of those things uh, were framed in that Western individualism. Um, and so that's why personal relationship with Jesus makes sense. Um, and yeah, I need to spend time with God and it's about my relationship with him, nobody else. And there's aspects of that are, that are true, but it misses parts of the Bible that talk about the people of God, um, the communal effects of sin, confessing as a nation instead of just confessing as me individually. Um, yeah, and so it's not even that we're necessarily reading the Bible wrong. I think we're just missing parts um, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so that's why hearing more stories and seeing more perspectives, I think, gives us a bigger picture. Um, question, do you have um, some suggestions for non-Western commentaries or commentators? I am trying to track more of these down uh, in terms of things that are like printed so that other people can have access to them. Um, I don't have great resources right now. I have actually still been trying to ask friends and find more of them. Um, I don't have it in front of me either, but if you send me a message or maybe I'll go back later and see whose comment that was. Um, I can see some of the things that I have um, been looking for. Uh, but for example, one thing that you can look into um, is if you grew up in or you mainly come from a background of like Western uh, American and European Christianity, uh, looking into something like liberation theology. Liberation mm -hmm. theology comes out of uh, many of the oppressed peoples, um, the African American church, uh, Latino churches uh, in the Americas as well, uh, where, yeah, this theology born of struggle. And we talk, when the Bible talks about hope and freedom, it means something different um, than it does. Uh, for someone who's just thinking about getting my ticket to heaven. Uh, and so, yeah, that's one aspect. Uh, I think seeing the other native expressions too, like uh, how if you have friends in, let's say, in China, like ask them, how do they live out their faith? Um, and how do they see God? That might be different than how you might. And so uh, it's kind of coming from collecting uh, those different perspectives of different people. Um, I had a friend who, uh, a good friend actually, who, um, talked about knowing somebody who went to an indigenous seminary. And um, I wonder if, you know, some of the resources could come from there, maybe yeah. looking up indigenous seminaries and seeing what kind of literature that they have um, would be a yeah. possibility. Yeah. yeah. And what I'm finding is uh, it's just lagging a little bit because these things haven't been highlighted before. A lot of the world has been, had been using uh, Western resources. Uh, 
Um, and so like the vast amount of stuff that's like published and available for print that you can buy. Um, and so that's why I've been working on tracking some of those things down. Um, some of them, they just didn't have the resources maybe to, someone might not come from a context where they can sit down and take time to like write a commentary, right? <laughs> or, and so it's not in print, but it's in sermons and messages. And so that's another way that you can get up to. Um, with the internet now, you can look up recordings, right, of other people's, um, how they teach and the things that they talk about. Um, they might not be all in book form. And so I think uh, hopefully that's catching up. There's been more of a call from some people um, for those types of resources. Yeah, I think too, um, from our own, in our own practice, like when we learn something or when we read something, right, or even doing like devotions, for example, um, reading, you know, like um, the Bible and just, just stopping and asking ourselves, okay, when I read a particular passage, what is, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? How is that impacted by like the context from which I, you know, grew up in or was surrounded by and interactions of those different systems? Um, like the other day, I start, actually started a um, chronological Bible uh, type of uh, uh, sorry resource. So basically, instead of going through the regular order of the Bible, it goes through by historical, um, like by chronology. And so, but I did have a second where I pause and was like, am I supposed to do this? Is this okay? And then I realized that was like impacted by just what I've been taught of how you should read the Bible, right? And I mean, granted, I'm not saying like, go and just be like, whatever, you know, do whatever you want. But I mean, I think that there's some merit to just Kind of like challenging some of those assumptions and yeah. i mean yeah and and just kind of like going for it um yeah and when we do that there's always some level of like disorientation where we might feel um things are off a little bit and that's a little bit jarring right because especially when we're talking about the level of beliefs some that we always believed um so for instance uh you deserve or you get what you deserve right like uh, that's a belief that might be core to a lot of the things that we do in life and the way that we view the world. And so when we start to think, well, are there other ways to view the world? Um, that kind of like upsets our entire framework of like how we've thought. Yeah. And so um, it's not a simple process. Uh, it's a lot of reflection. I do a lot of grieving too. Yeah, and grieving mm -hmm. and realizing, hey, maybe the way that I was brought up um, isn't the whole story or isn't the you know the best way to uh, to approach all things um in every way and so it's not to throw it all out um mm -hmm. there's lots of good stuff in there but sometimes we can kind of move around and jerk in that reaction where we're like well i need to get away from that stuff we go completely opposite of that um i would say keep exploring with community that actually helps us stay grounded as well um, because otherwise we'll just go on our own whims yeah going on maybe one last thing yeah Experiencing God through just one cultural lens could reduce the beauty and vastness of who he is. Um, that's probably why I love God so much more after learning different practices. Yeah, um, I love it too. I've learned so much from you guys and from um, people who come from different traditions. Uh, you know, I believe that's what Jesus wants and intends. Uh, the picture of the body of all of the believers at the very end of the Bible is one where people from every tribe and tongue and language are together worshiping God. Uh, and so that means all of our worship, all of the languages we worship in, all of the ways that we worship are all going to be a part of that expression. Um, you know, I regularly uh, talk about how, you know, none of us probably has things 100% right. Uh, and so that means that there's things that we can learn from everyone uh, in contributing to that picture. Um, and so you guys do that in the different ways that you seek uh, to follow God and to live out his love in your community. Um, yeah, so let's keep doing that together. Uh, thank you for the questions. Um, I will try to follow up um, on those couple of things that we've mentioned. Uh, as we continue to reflect, though, uh, we are doing so today. It's the first Sunday of the month. And so we're going to be doing so by taking communion. So uh, right now, um, you can go run to your kitchen and grab something that can represent the cup and something that can represent the bread uh, because we're going to be taking together um, online virtual communion uh, and some of you guys i know like that because you get to choose what you're eating um, <laughs> but as we do that we do so um recognizing how it brings us together uh, in jesus 
Uh, one thing actually I'm reminded of today, right? Western culture often focuses a lot on forgiveness and sin. Uh, and we can think about that in our communion meal. And it's certainly a big part of it, right? Jesus uh, died so that we can have forgiveness of sins. And that's part of what we are, re are remembering today. But focus on only that part of the Bible can actually miss some of the imagery. Uh, for instance, uh, Jesus, when he started the communion meal, he said, this is my body and this is my blood. He also said that's the blood of the new covenant. It was actually about relationship. Uh, some of you guys mentioned meals and loving meals in your cultures. And that's actually exactly what we are supposed to get. That feeling of communal meals when we take communion together. Right? Any Middle Easterner would not have missed this in the Bible. That when they are sitting together to have a meal and Jesus uh, breaks the bread and he passes it around to people. right? And they take the cup and they pass the cup around they share it. That they are having a meal together. In Middle Eastern and Eastern cultures, you don't sit down at a meal together if you are angry at one another, right? You, you're not going to invite them over to your home. You're not going to sit down and have dinner together. You just won't invite them. And so when Jesus says, we are all going to sit down and have this meal together, he is saying that this relationship is right, that we have been brought together, that we are in relationship with one another, I am here for you, you are here for me. Uh, and so there is a communal aspect to communion, right? That's where the word commune comes from, that we are relating to one another. Uh, and so when we talk uh, in today's day and age in a uh, multicultural world about everyone having a seat at the table, right? Jesus started that. He said, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you come from, you are invited to join in this table. And so we are going to take the communion elements uh, together today. And in doing so, we recognize that Jesus made it possible for us to have a relationship with him and that he brought all of us together at the same table. I know it's virtual today, but all together at the same table to be in relationship with one another, that we can have right relationships with one another, that we can be redeemed together as a community. And so uh, I'm going to invite you to take the bread because uh, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way. He took the cup and he said, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as long as we take bread and take of the cup, we proclaim Jesus coming that he came and that he is coming again. And so we get to celebrate that together. We're going to continue to reflect in a final song uh, where we recognize that over and above all of our individual cultures, our countries, the places we come from, the places where we live, that Jesus is the king, the one who is united all in him. And so let's sing together. chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise who can stop the lord almighty our god is the lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles 
Make way before the King of Kings Our God who calls the saved Is He to set the captives free For who can stop the Lord Almighty Our God is the Lion The Lion of Judah He's roaring with power And fighting our battle Let's pray and celebrate our God. And you are the King of Kings, and so we make way for you to come into this world. God, we recognize that sometimes we get in the way of that, but we also know that you created us all uniquely, individually, uh, to give a different expression of who you are. Help us as we continue to reflect your beauty in this world. We want to see you high and lifted up. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. Uh, thanks uh, for everyone watching. If you're hearing me, you are part of what uh, is going on today. For those of you guys who are asking for resources, I'm going to um, put together some. But actually, many people are in the comment section uh, right now posting some great uh, people to hear and to listen to. Uh, and so you could be looking for that. Um, and... Yeah, keep seeking out um, just how other people are doing things. Uh, I think one of the neatest things uh, is just seeing how other people worship, worshiping with others. Uh, you can do that actually very easily right now in the live stream season, right? Uh, you can go click around on other churches and see what they are doing. Um, yeah, experience those things. Uh, thanks for being a part of this because you guys are a part of how I grow, how we can all experience together in community. Uh, and so hope you guys have a great week. Have a super rest of this Sunday, uh, and we will see you next week.